Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, Nice Guy Show. I am the Nice Guy, author Phil Torsivia, and I gotta mention again, that song that's playing that I love so much is called Come Again by Dodge and Fusky. Go pick that up, the link's on the Wazzalo Media page. I'm here with my friends, Kathy, Dr. Michelle, and Michelle. We're talking about interior design and all kinds of good stuff. Let's get back to the interior design thing. Um, we were just talking, it's funny. <laughs> I have bowls of stuff that she put in my house, and, and Michelle rightly guessed that it was around 2005 when I had this done. <laughs> so I had these Perfect. fancy yeah. bowls that have balls in them, and some of the bowls, like the ones in the kitchen, have fruit, like the fake fruit. Mm -hmm. And some of my fake apples are now white. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, what, what, so roll forward to 2012, what do we put in these bowls now? Or do we even have um, bowls? I think we're simplifying things. You know, the economy is a huge part of that. So it's getting rid of a lot of the frivolous, pretentious stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having, like, a cool accessory or something that's kind of quirky, <clears throat> that's a conversation starter. Fake fruit isn't that. Put real fruit in it, right? <laughs> so put real fruit. Yeah, so well, when I put real fruit in, like, I'll put bananas in there or avocados, and they turn colors and it doesn't well, lemons. Yeah. Lem yeah, lemon. Oranges. I mean, things that you're going to use, obviously. Fine. You know, it's... That's old school design where a lot of homes were staged. Right. And there's a place for that, like when you're getting ready to sell your home or in a model home when you're looking okay. to purchase one. But day to day when you're living there, you know, you don't need fake fruit. Just what about the stuff or fine. What snacks about snacks or snacks. whatever snacks? Yeah, because then snacks I come over there. and I'm hungry and I pick up the fake <laughs> apple and I'm like, oh, Really? Were you tempted <laughs> to bite the white apple? I don't right. think so. Well, I think it was kind of right. green on one side. Yeah, so I was, yeah. yeah when you yeah. see it a white on, uh, it just, it I just rotate them. It just contrived. You know well, I mean? it was contrived. It was, and it was. A bowl of chocolate right. and M&M's. The yes, there you go. I You're always keep M&M's. How about yeah. that? So you can put some decorative things in there if you want. Colorful M&M's. But <laughs> what about yes, candles? Nice. How are you with candles? Uh, if you're going to use them, great. If they're going to sit there and collect dust, not so much. So you have to yeah. get candles and burn them. Yeah, if you're going to use candles, burn them. Bedroom too. Yeah. Sure. It's the right. best place for candles. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you you make sure you're dating you... has some candles. I do, yeah. but you have to make sure you blow them out. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm always afraid of. Because in, 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 yeah, in the rare occurrence that I actually have sex in my bedroom, then the candles. You know, <laughs> well, I like to fall asleep right after. I'm like a normal guy. So oh my I have to Wait, make did you sure say I, in the rare occurrence that you have sex in your bedroom? Right. Yes. Right. Would I usually have it on the yes. pool table? No. Well, <laughs> right. I know where you're going with that. That's funny. No, so, yeah, so you got to be careful with the, with the candles. Right. So that, you know, when you're done and the sex towel comes out, on your way back, oh you have to gosh. blow the candle out. sex towel. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what? This, you don't use the sex towel? Stop. Stop. <laughs> All right. Um, what, what does this kind of thing cost? Not the sex towel. What is uh, that? <laughs> to have interior design. What, Six ninety nine. Um, home goods. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so you can um, charge hourly, you said, or... You charge hourly. Um, so what charge typically a flat fee. Um, a lot of designers, you know, it's based on the credentials, mm -hmm. of course. I would say on average you're looking at 75 to 150 an hour. All right. Um, you can uh, be billed a flat fee. You know, if the designer has a really good idea of what you're looking for, they can quickly come up with a number and some clients prefer that because they can budget mm -hmm. and they don't feel like you're running up their tab so to speak um, and sometimes designers will simply charge you a percentage of what you buy so right. it's whatever your budget is they know they're gonna make X amount and you can add that on um, Makes sense. but it really depends you know a lot of designers are flexible these days so you can kind of control how much it costs um, you can just pay for a color <clears throat> consultation if that's what you need or maybe it's a room by room basis um, what's been really popular lately is a lot of designers are getting on the e-design trend, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you can contact a designer across the country to help you. Um, what they pretty much do is create a design game plan for you or mood boards, and they give you a list of resources, and you implement the design yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can cut costs that way. You can get the expertise of a designer without having to pay for travel and right. time spent one-on-one -on -one with them. Right. You can Skype with designers now. Yeah. That's something yeah, that we're kind of that. getting into. So you can do online consultations. So there's lots of ways to utilize a designer without having to hire mm -hmm. one that's typically in the box, you know, mm -hmm. where you're... Right. with them from day one. Now, when you're paying somebody to work hourly, are they charging you for the time they spend shopping for you yeah, also? Yeah, you it can be. So, so the design time, the shopping time, the and time And they should spell that out. I mean, you should always have a contract mm -hmm. with a designer just like you would with any other professional. Mm -hmm. And they'll spell that out. You know, like X amount of meetings are included in your contract or phone calls are cool, but if they're over a certain amount of time, then I'm going to start billing. Yep. You know, because time is money. Sure is. You know? Yeah, um, it's only fair. But when you're hiring a designer, you should de there's definitely some things that you should look for. Yeah, know? what are like the top three things you should ask a designer um, when? You should look at their <clears throat> credentials. You know, okay. make sure they're educated and trained in design. Um, 
each state's different as far as what's required, but um, I don't see it happen too often, but you know, sometimes because the influx of design TV, we've seen a lot of people that maybe fancy themselves as designers because they've watched X amount of episodes of you know Design <laughs> on a Dime. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I love design TV. I think it's done a great job in bringing awareness to mm -hmm. how important interior design can be. Um, but sometimes if people aren't really educated on all what's involved in it, they can think it's a matter of simply just having good taste. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you're not hiring someone because they have good taste. Right. So definitely look at their credentials. Um, but probably number one is their portfolio. Um, their work you know, their volume of work is going to speak volumes about, you know, how good they are. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, if their style is in keeping with your style. Right. You know, you want to make sure you hire. If someone does nothing but French country and you want something modern, probably not a good idea yeah. to hire yeah. them. You might kind of struggle there. But definitely look into their backgrounds and make sure they're legit mm -hmm. and um, get a contract signed and just sounds. make sure they're very transparent with what you're paying for. Yeah, it sounds like the best way to go, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so now your husband is also involved a little bit, right? Doesn't he woodworking um, or something? A little bit. Um, he definitely he has his own business, but um, one of the things that we started offering a couple of years ago was um, handmade like wooden accessories and furniture. Yeah, those are cool. I saw them on your website. Yeah, What's it? Studio... Studiosurface.com. Studio-surface.com. Surface. Studio Studio yeah, some cool pictures. And, um, you know, he's been working with his hands since he was young. His dad taught him how to use power tools at three. I'm sure wow. this one's going to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, much of the chagrin of his mom, you know. But, um, wow. yeah. So he's been working with his hands since, you know, he was a little thing and um, appreciates, you know, good craftsmanship and... Mm -hmm. There's definitely a place for it in your interiors. You know, there's, again, you can definitely find some great stuff at big box stores, but it's nice to have one of a kind pieces too. And we and we thought so, so we started adding that. That's a good idea. Yeah, it looked really yeah. cool. That was one of the best things I saw on your site with a little woodwork. Yeah. I was like, that's really neat. Yeah. Um, so how does one go about adding value to your home? With I mean, is it just as easy as painting and changing carpets out? Or yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, depending on what your goal is, if you're trying to sell your house, then it might be a little bit more, you know, inclusive. But just simply changing on accessories, like getting rid of your fake fruit and putting in, <laughs> putting in the real stuff. I'll do it. Uh, <clears throat> adding new paint. You know, if your carpet's beat up, definitely you're going to want to replace it. But um, mm -hmm. it could just be as simple as swapping out accessories, um, just refreshing it. What about so curtains? Speak. Um, yeah, definitely. Curtains, blinds, shades, Draperies, all that. Draperies, blinds, shades. Yeah, yeah my kitties love mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, they climb them. Yeah. I, um, so, let, let me see. What, oh, kitchens. What, what do you do? What do you typically offer in a kitchen? Because I know kitchens where, when you have a party, that's where people are going to hang out. So, you right. want that to be a real inviting place. It needs to be functional. It yes. needs to be a cool place. Uh, I have a client right now, actually, and, you know, they don't want to blow their budget on their kitchen because they may move in six years or so when their child goes into school. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, they want it to be stylish. So you can just resurface your cabinets. You know, cabinets are essentially a box with a pretty door on them. So you can salvage them if they're in good condition. You can repaint them, recover them, relaminate them. Depending on your countertops, you can have those resurfaced. You can just replace those. Again, paint. You know, if, if the tile's in good shape and it's not from 1975, mm -hmm. then you could probably get away with it. Um, we've also added just new cabinet hardware on your cabinets. Oh, so yeah, that's a good can, idea. It's like jewelry for yeah, your cabinets. Yeah. So you put new poles yeah. on there, all of a sudden mm -hmm. you can Change transform the whole look. them. Yeah. Very cool. All right, well, how do people reach you? You're in Del Mar, right? I'm in Del Mar. Are you available for the e-work? Yeah, well? okay. I am. So I, I'm available to do online consultations or via phone call. But you can find us at www studio-surface.com or you can give us a call at 858-353-7925. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. I'll definitely get rid of my fruit. Um, uh, we can back next segment. I'm going to talk a little bit about publishing and how I got from this to this. And uh, thanks for joining us.